person. Um, you managed to I designed and developed an entire video, video game. And programming together to make some kind of play experience. Did you add sound? There's sound in there. Oh um, my God. I worked with for all the the sound the music and sound i uh i hired Saad ali of reckoning storm audio works to do all that he nice. did a fantastic job Ups and actually Saad. now is how can you the perfect can time um do you have a twitter he does have a twitter oh. and it is chip Zalik. let me link that uh, are you about to announce something i, I was feel like, i gonna... feel like you're on the verge of announcing something big it's going to be it's going to be more interesting though actually I feel I like heard... at the end though. Oh, do you want to Oh, you want to announce it at the end? Well, cuz no one knows much about this game yet. So okay. once they know yeah. more, we'll hype them up about Pixel Oats, but you've got to reveal and that's that's like why you're here. It's almost like we designed this to be some kind of emotional <laughs> panel not, of some sort. It's not why I'm here, but I th I just realized that this would be the perfect time to to share something. But um uh I'm going to put in the Twitch hitbox. Hitbox, not Twitch. Hitbox chat, um, if it will let it. Yes, oh, there it you did. Go. Okay. There you go. Um, there we go. There is Chip his Solid. Twitter. Check him out. He's fantastic to work with. I have never worked with or collaborated with anybody in real life or online. Well, it's technically real life there too, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> online isn't real life. No, no, no. <laughs> I've never worked with Look, anybody I'm in who's space been that right fantastic. Now. This is yeah. real life. This is cyberspace. I mean, we're <laughs> what, what is it? We were just talking about Neuromancer and uh, yeah. and uh, in that game, uh, oh, the, the game that was based on that. That's some historical literature right there. Oh good yeah, stuff. classic. Uh, so good. Uh, so super pixelo. Yes. Uh, can you get up the footage of this, dear God? There he goes. Thanks, God. Uh, so this <laughs> is super pixelo that we're looking at. Yes. So um, the quick rundown of what Super Pixalo is is it is a uh, it's a precision platformer kind of retro themed um, kind of pixel arty kind of um, but it's more of just you know more of a, a simpler graphical style that's representative of each decade as you go through all these decades and and travel through essentially a travel through. Uh, travel through time as a pixel from a 1960s arcade uh, cabinet um, that has grown up and lived its life uh, inside of an arcade cabinet inside of a uh, like a karaoke bar almost um, that plays music and and, um, oh. and movies uh, over over all these different decades. So it's like a, it's like a the best way to describe the the actual uh, the the bar that the arc and the story all explains this um, is it's a bar that you know on the weekends they pl they play movies on a projector. So um, and and of course it's a rock and roll. They've you know classic rock artists going through. So the story has all these subtle references to different artists that came and played at the bar um, because I'm a huge music fanatic of classic rock and all the way through the decades. Um, not, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I really enjoy all of it. You're a nerd. I'll just say that. It's only like you're making a game called Super Pixalo. I, I would exactly. Hope so. That's cool now, though that the... you're taking on uh, that same. You're taking on multiple different genres of uh, thought outside of games themselves. It's like, all right, you're taking inspiration from games, but you're also putting in inspiration from music and also just real culture. Uh, that yeah. whole dive. Absolutely. Our aesthetic. Um, and what you actually aren't seeing yet in the footage, um, but uh, I think later on the footage, because the person who made this footage had actually already played through a bunch of levels, but there are these things called collectibles um, that are, each of them are a reference to a different movie within the decade that you're playing. Um, so what that basically means Oh, uh, is sorry that, to interrupt, but I yeah. think you just, I made a connection there that... Um... So you're saying that this game actually itself, is, the, as the levels progress, you are aging through multiple years. Yes. So the level oh. art actually changes completely every different decade. So there's uh, one, two, seven, uh, there are six decades <laughs> and then one bonus level, which is it got some Easter eggs in there and some fun stuff. But um, there are six decades represented. Um, and the, what we're looking at right now is uh, the yellow world, which is... Uh, um, this is the Atari style. 
<laughs> uh, it's actually the 1970s. It's not earlier. Yeah, 1970s. So the color palette is very inspired. I was originally going to go through go for games, so like go for off of color palettes within games, but then I realized, um, well, that's a little bit cliche. I think I can be a little it's more a creative little bit than cliche. that. <laughs> it is. It is. It is cliche because I think there was a Nintendo game that had all these references to other Nintendo games within it, and I, I can't remember the name. I love right that now, you were but... like, you know what? I'm gonna actually draw the line here. Yeah, so <laughs> all the worlds are basically, they're modeled off of things that I remember from things that are from that decade. So the colors here are that very bold yellow that um, you often see in advertising. Like in or, or a, yeah, uh, I'm thinking like, of, uh, what's, the, what's the Atari game with the tanks, right? I don't remember. Um, Not, someone hit so me the inspiration was more of just the bolden colors of, of, um, of the 70s and the culture in itself. Um, so very vibrant, very colorful culture was going on right there. Um, the browns are very reminiscent of uh, actually the furniture within my grandmother's house. Uh, all that kind of like overstained, uh, slightly glossy. By the time I was a kid and playing around with it, it was chipping and you'd get all those nice little chips just oh, around so on the floor. Oh, so you wanted to revive your... You wanted to revitalize your grandmother's furniture. Essentially, yeah, in a video game. Um, so in, as the worlds go on, you go into the, um, the the 1980s is the next decade, and there you see much more bold, vibrant blues and yellows and that, that kind of golden orange um, that uh, was very prevalent in, in movie posters, actually, of that time. Um, then the 90s moves into more of actually something a little bit more modeled off of video games, kind of like a, a little bit uh, a sharp contrast of, of green and purple and, and blue um, that uh, is more reminiscent of like those early 90s video games that I started. That's when I was born. So I started growing up playing those games. And so that was inspired a little bit from there. Then the 2000s, it moves into a more of a professional blue, uh, much more clean cut. Uh, and then the uh, 2010s, it's black and white, very uh, high contrast. Um, and these are actually more, it follows along in the story, more representative of uh, either cultural things going on in the culture, uh, either in uh, music or in the world. Um, Which and reflects especially, each other, of course. Music exactly. of course reflects the and, world is made in. Yeah, it, precisely, and in movies. And so um, when uh, later on in this gameplay, you'll actually see these little things that are collectibles, and you collect them, and each one is basically a prop uh, or a representation of a prop from a movie within that decade. Um, the title of each collectible, when you actually go into the transition screen or there is a place to browse all your collectibles, and there are 121 of these. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, are all references to different movies, and I'm a huge movie fanatic. I love watching movies. I watched over 350 movies uh, in the last six months while developing and designing all these pixel art collectibles. Um, and uh, and and I, what I wanted to do, kind of on a big scale, was kind of, was tie um, tie all these different things. Like art is often, I mean, uh, video games are often seen as oh, it's art. You know, you see these things. Uh, it, it's it's the visual, it's the audio, it's the interactive, it's the story, all in one. Well, um, I have a little bit of a a little bit of a history bug. I'm not a history buff, but uh, I th being homeschooled, I was taught uh, very much to just embrace history and embrace and love every chance you get to uh, to experience any kind of um, learning, and especially in a historical way. I'm um, looking. Sorry, right now on the stream, I'm looking at the jukebox pickup. I yeah. think is what it is. Am I yeah. reading the synopsis to Jukebox Hero? Uh, that is the reference. That is right there. That is absolutely <laughs> I correct. Think that's what I'm reading. I'm like yeah. reading through uh, this. I'm so, like... <laughs> so each of these is, is like a different reference to something. In the, in the 80s, I mean, what you got, uh, I think it was Foreigner. Yeah, it was Foreigner. Yeah. I should know the Foreigner. Uh, Jukebox Hero, I love that song so much. Um, and, it, and I wanted to kind of bring these different things in that, like, were part of music in that decade. And then... Um, that could be brought in into the actual game story and hopefully tie that into the gameplay. Now the gameplay is very, it's very simple. It's very uh, traditional platformer. I was going to um, say, uh, you kind of have, I want to bring this around this kind of topic of mechanics in a very roundabout sure, way. Yeah, go for it. Um, you have a very romantic idea of storytelling. It's very methodical and paced. Uh, just watching through how, um, Everything goes. The world that you're, you're I don't. Do you even name Pixalo? Uh, the the world that Pixalo is jumping around in is not 
uh, very complex. It's like, all right, here's you, here's the exit, get to the exit. You're going to get to the exit when you get to it. it like, it's inevitable. Um, there might be some obstacles in the way, um, but once you do, you're going to progress a little farther down this uh, down this decade, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that it, it's not necessarily complex. It might be challenging, but it's not complex. And so it it kind of makes this pacing that's really feels romanticized. Uh, and I really am enjoying that. Like I, I'm enjoying watching through this, and I probably just as much enjoy playing it because the the character does this like flip thing every time they jump that's yep. really adorable yeah and he's got that adorable mustache too which is actually uh based off of the mustache of uh passport 2 from the 1954 yes. uh movie um around the world in 80 days yeah with i believe was it uh <laughs> who was the, who was the main actor of that harold's uh, Har no, uh, harrison ford no, 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 no. Uh, My Fair Lady, he, I think he was in that as well. Um, That's the main guy. Uh, Harold, I feel like it's right on my, it's on the tip of my brain stem. Woody Harrelson. It's I not know. Harrelson, but yeah. I don't know, I'm sorry. Chat will have your back for sure, because they have immediate access awesome. to Hopefully the internet. Awesome, hopefully they Yes, they do, and I'm trying not to, not Harrison Ford. Uh, <laughs> Harrison Ford ad adaptation Charleston, of Charlton Roman. Heston. Yes, that is exactly right. I believe it was him, and I love I love Austin the stuff Max. from him. Hype um, Max. Yeah, uh, Woody Woodgrain Harrelson. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna stop looking at chat because that's just you gonna really, distract me. And... I'm just watching all your designs. You really love making the uh, making the person jump directly onto a block above them. I keep seeing that yeah. move over and over, and I'm like, "That's kind of cool." All right. I so, so had had exotics not already done all of this stuff beforehand. There'd be collectibles like in that little. There'd notch. be collectibles in every single level, uh, which I'm glad it, uh, that uh, that actually you're not seeing all these. So it's kind of like something that when when you do buy the game, uh, it's out on the Ouya right now, um, and it's currently in green light, and it won't be out for PC until it's green lit. So uh, vote for it there. I believe we have a link for that somewhere. Um, but we're already, we're already 18%. So we're on our, on our way. I want to, um, okay. You know what? I just thought of a, a tangent that is really applicable <laughs> to you, sir. Um, awesome. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Let's talk about Ouya. You I are, love Ouya. you are a published developer on a console. Yes. And if that you had is... asked me what I would be doing a year ago, uh, well, I still do what I did a year ago. I do web dev for a day job because that pays the bills. Uh, but if you had asked me if I had even the faintest idea that uh, I would turn a little web game that I made in my free time into a game that is now on a video game console and is on the way to being greenlit, uh, I would laugh at you. Uh, so This last year has been crazy. I, I mean, there's a lot of criticism of the Ouya in mm -hmm. larger video game circles. But even in smaller ones, and especially in like India is super critical of the Ouya for not mm -hmm. saving indie games or some kind of perceived idea of that. But the idea that anyone can make a game and publish it on the Ouya and have that identity of like the published console developer and be able to put that mm -hmm. in the homes of people because that's what a, a console is kind of designed of ontologically. Yeah, um, that's that's huge. And that's huge for you, and that's huge for the developers, and I think that that's an yep. understated thing, and that's something that whoa, needs to be hyped in Indie Three. <laughs> I don't know what Exotics did, but I think his uh, his video footage went Starry Night on me. Oh, it's I, I I'm guessing it's kind of I don't know if it's a laggy for everyone, but it's kind of a laggy for me on my end. I'm trying to watch and and talk at the same time, which is not very multi brain talented, whatever you call that. Okay, I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, the Ouya is absolutely fantastic, and I think it, I think the reason, well, one, it, it liked to get hated on. It didn't like to get hated on. People like to hate it on because that was the kind of like the popular thing to do. I mean, people people enjoy being bullies. Um, sure, and I, I'm but saying I, I don't want to say that in like, like a super negative way. Like it's just innately you want to feel like the tougher person. It may whether you're a guy or a girl, you want to feel you uh, financially like the most successful in saving indie gaming yeah. um, and publishing indies to millions of people on, uh, on every platform. Yeah. Um, it, the things that it's doing for art and 
for expression and for just every single person that is able to publish to this platform, that's uh, completely understated, but uh, the biggest yeah. thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely understated. It's a huge thing. The fact that me as an individual can spend nine months, and it took me nine months from the start of development for the Ouya, and uh, the idea was already there. It's in a little web game that's nine levels. You can actually play it on my site, littletinman.com. Um, and it's just a little, like, web thing. And I and I and when the Ouya came out, I got it the first day. Uh, I got a used um, Ouya the first day it was released, and... Uh, and I didn't even know what it was, and I was like, "This is cool, though. Wait a minute, I can. This is a small little thing, and I can suddenly have the power to bring something that is a hobby onto a console that someone could play on their TV. And in fact, has now been played on an arcade unit uh, over at Bird Bros Arcade Units. Um, Chris Downing played it on his Ouya Portable that he made. Um, <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh, it was the cool. That made my day. Launch day was when Chris Downing." Uh, posted a uh, a picture of him playing on on his handcrafted uh, Ouya portable. Um, oh, by the way, and it, your, it just opens up huge possibilities there. Your game, uh, your game's endings have suddenly turned to Sonic. The endings. The uh, the goal. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 for legal reasons, I'll just say they're representative of that. Um, I actually don't know if. You know, they're not exactly. It's kind of like, yeah, trying to emulate that kind of feel. When you're when you're only seven by seven bits, I don't think I could get you know slapped. Yeah, no, it, it emulates Sonic <laughs> like we emulate E3. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's that's. It's a loving homage. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, uh, Parlock, no, the OE Portable is not just a tablet. It actually has the controller built in. Um, <laughs> oh! But, uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 check it out. Uh, Chris Downing's site, you can Google his name, and the OE Portable on YouTube, you can find it. It's really, really cool. Um, that guy's an amazing guy. And, uh, you know, one thing i got to say is the, the most exciting thing to me about the OE uh, Overall, is just the community, the community over at Ouya Forum, the community, um, the Ouya Cast with Ouya Central TV and Ouya Brew that they put on every week. They put on a, a a podcast where they interview developers. They talk about the latest games, and there are over eight hundred games right now on the Ouya in one year. I think um, now is the one year anniversary of when the Ouya came out this week, um, and it already has eight hundred. Plus games. That's insane. And lots more coming. They've got Dragon Bat Dragon Cancer is coming. Uh, they've I'm got uh, We've got eight hundred games too. Whatever. <laughs> do that. Oh yeah, everybody can anybody can do that. No, it's just no, exciting no, though, because it's all like it's it's all really accessible. Uh most of the games, I'd say ninety percent of the games, including Super Pixalo, are free to try. So you get a certain amount of game you get to play for free before you buy. So you can kind of find out if you even want to spend money on the games. And the most expensive game I think is twenty bucks. Bill, I only think there's one. Why did you design uh, this level? Why? Why did, I just, why did you design what, is this? Is he still this on is, the same level? No, my, no, my feed is stopped. It's it's this uh it's a level let me explain this. Uh it's a level sure. where you have a slow moving line of blocks that yes. once it crosses a certain threshold you can no longer access that part of the level and so i'm just watching this really slowly ominous moving pillar and he, yes he, yes Sonic's is trying to get up this thing before the pillar crosses, and he keeps falling and i'm just like oh god i can't my heart's yeah, so a lot of the level design is actually just sort of um is yeah. to teach you stuff yeah um to teach you to hurt is well no well okay so Sorry. i have adhd <laughs> if you haven't realized that already i'm kind of you know crazy and i don't i can't think straight and all that kind of stuff but um it's for me i wanted to put some levels in there that were about patience or that were about racing against the elements in themselves so uh in the build you're seeing here and this is an early desktop build so uh any bugs that happen you know that's gonna be fixed don't worry about that um but uh i've been working on the timer um in the last couple weeks uh all uh, that will be added so that you have different game modes that you can have it timed or you can have it not timed so you can kind of just enjoy um, the levels as they are, and so I wanted to have some levels that, because I wasn't originally adding timers in there, and I'm adding them because of popular request, um, but uh, they Aww. weren't in there originally, because... Um, like a timer, a count-up timer, not a count-down timer, right? 
Yeah, count up. So, okay. so a way you can be, it can be competitive. Gotcha. Um, and nice. and uh, and I'm not totally opposed to that. I just wanted the game to release without that because I find that stressful in games, and I don't really like playing games that make me feel stressed out. Um, personally, um, oh, exotics, you fell. <laughs> it is, exotics loves this game. He's he's uh, streamed it, I think a dozen times at least in the last few months. He was the first person to stream Super Pixalo. Um, he's been fantastically supportive. Uh, I we love the streams about when this. Do you want to talk about what it means to find streamers to play your games? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, that was that was a totally new experience for me too. I didn't do any advertising or anything like that coming up. All my uh, all my say, uh, my promotional efforts were all through streamers, and I I had the uh, absolute pleasure. Even though some of them never streamed my game, just being able to talk to and having them play the game. Uh, streamers like Supervin47, uh, Hanan, uh, Hammocks, uh, Parlock, even you, um, just being able to see you stream and, and, and build those connections, um, to learn how people play games. And that's been one of the most important things as a game developer, to be able to see people stream games and learn right there. Cause you guys talk through while you're playing it. So you kind of, you get kind of like a verbal play test and it's so helpful um it's more helpful than any of the play testing i did with anybody else just having exotics play the game and watching it and re-watching it being able to him to be able to play it and not feel like i i was breathing over his shoulder watching him and writing notes was so so uh important and uh and i was actually able to release the game with uh, relatively few bugs i think there was a, a few bugs but uh uh, nothing major. There's also, I think yeah, there's bug. also the practical purpose of the bug testing. <laughs> yeah, which is which is super. I mean, everybody hates bug testing, but there's it's so important, and there's this. no way around it. Uh, oh, fantastic! An hour, an hour from now, at seven. Awesome. Or six, excuse me. Awesome. So after this show, uh, mm -hmm. on the Indie Four channel, there's going to be stuff about that. I'll be there watching. I'm excited. Uh, I, isn't Parlock going to be on that one too? Parlock's going to be on there. Uh, I thought he tweeted about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if I didn't, like, learn about you guys, especially, like, you, Solon, uh, like, Vin and, and Hanan, if I didn't learn about you guys, um, get to know you guys on a somewhat personal level, as much as personal as you can get, you know, living across the country and online and stuff, um, uh, but, and then finding out from that just the vibrant community that the indie game community has mm -hmm. um i would probably have given up gaming by now because during development at least i found personally i'd never worked on a project this big on my own and when you work in solitude and the only people you see it is you and your wife and you know your wife is obviously supportive um and well maybe hopefully not. i'm biased but <laughs> maybe not yeah maybe totally not. i know callie has been extremely supportive oh, of awesome. everything and uh i definitely Shout would out never to callie. Finish. yes i would never she's actually due she <gasps> she was due sunday oh. and so we're just waiting for our our son to arrive Guys, anytime now, uh, was which is extremely dad. exciting yeah so i came up that with was the, the news that's 83 <laughs> done <laughs> that's, e3 reveal phil's dad yep <laughs> done <laughs> um yeah, Whoa. I'll announce his. Yeah, I'm gonna announce his name later on Twitter. You know, after he's born, everything on Twitter and everything. He's a very <laughs> hashtag uh, actually, dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's barely a prototype exactly. right now. <laughs> yeah, it's technically a prototype right now. So that's it's your next design project is fatherhood. It's not my next design project because I designed that a while ago. Um, no, no, fatherhood. Don't, not don't. Oh, fatherhood. Yeah. Yes, yes. Not that's the, gonna be really not the product itself. That's launching soon. Yeah. But anyway, on on the working on thing as in, you know totally isolated is you get these very lows and highs and lows and highs and to the point where it's like you just it's almost like depression lows where and I've never I've been a little bit depressed but I've never been you know I can't say I know what it's like to be insanely depressed for years I sure, don't the, the, the idea um, of clinical depression sure yeah the, but the idea of like where you have like these these times in development where for like three or four weeks you can't get anything done you don't feel like making games at all you just feel like you know just frustrated and empty and you're like i why do i make games i'm a nobody i've never made nobody knows 
my games. I have a few friends who've played my web games, but web games are web games. You know, anybody can make a web game. Now you're a console uh, if you're looking publisher. to get started in web game, make some web games. Web games are the way to go. Uh, also, uh, to yeah, get, to get practice. To, to follow through with that, shout outs to all the people who are doing uh, indie game, indie three game jam. Yes. Because hey, I heard that the the theme potentially is in, uh, indie golf. And if it is, I'm making a game. I'm making a game. Oh, I would I love to golf. make a game. Let's make golf better. Yeah, not, let's not let's make old, old dudes anymore. Redefine indie golf. Like, can we make this not just a video game thing, but like a real thing? I like up for that theme. Can we just like make that canon right now? <laughs> Who needs golf courses, really? I vote. Uh, this is all about us, of course. But I vote, and my Toddler vote is jam. <laughs> my vote is more powerful than most of your guys's. Um, I vote to make that the theme. I vote to make that the theme, too, because I feel like that could get really, really interesting and some cool ideas. Of course, you know, the, the purpose of game jams is make whatever you want, but uh, having a theme is always fun because then people go even crazier and have crazier ideas. But uh, um, but anyway, oh, so... Um, this level's so, getting mean now. Oh, yeah, they get meaner and meaner, and this is only the 90s. So wait till you see the 2000s, 2010s, and then the, the bonus levels are... I'm going to keep adding with, to those with updates, and uh, and those are just more just explorations of simple ideas that I wanted to see. Um, I have my theory in game design, which maybe some of you would be interested in, um, is theory. that uh, I have well, I have so I you know I I have indie game the movie special edition the Blu-ray <laughs> set with all the extra stuff. I've watched it over thirty times in my in the last year. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of. And so emailing. you made an indie game, the movie Clone, right here, obviously. I basically, basic, well, this is hugely inspired, like in the credits, uh, um, it's very much inspired, the whole idea was uh, very much inspired by indie game, the movie, um, uh, a shout out to those, those the, the guys who made that movie, um, the guy and gal who made that movie. Yeah, um, those two are, they're... And then, uh, and of course, Orson's, uh, no, no, not Orson's, Orson's Scott Cards. Orson's Scott Card. <laughs> uh, Ernest Klein wrote a that book called Ready Player One, and it's a uh, it's a book about a, a video Easter eggs and video games, but it's a novel and it's amazing. And if you haven't read it, read it. It's great. Um, and it's hugely inspired off of that. Basically, uh, from the movie, in, um, the movie references. I, I was reading that, and the original uh, Pixala web game had that kind of in the. Um, it referenced Queen everywhere, and I love Queen. Everyone's, but in this game, I was putting out like, golf designs in chat right now. Um, awesome. But also, if you could put a link to Ready Player One in there, that'd be great. Yeah, awesome. I'll put the Amazon link. Um, you can't. It's too, fantastic. Uh, other people though, I'm making chat work because they love. Oh yeah, work someone done. put it in chat. So I don't want to. I don't want to look it up. Props I don't to that guy. Google, Google, and Google it and paste no, we're, it. We're busy. We can. They want to do work too. There it is. I hate Thanks, it. Job. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic book. Uh, very inspiring. Um, it's not. You know, it's not. Uh, uh, it's not. I wouldn't say it's an instant classic, but it's definitely very uh, relevant to game developers and game designers. Yeah, Ready Player anyway, One is also also very readable. Um, oh yeah, I could also give you lots and lots of game theory books, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't tell you that they were necessarily the most readable. Um, yeah, well, there's a, actually a, a fantastic talk for any other game developers out there who are interested. Uh, is Brian Moriarty's uh, talk that he gave um, called "The Secret of Psalm 46," which is a fantastic look at motivation. Uh, providing motivation in video games in a very indirect way. And uh, that one's an interesting. I found out about that from a Jonathan Blow talk. I've seen all those guys' talks. I I fanboy out for all those guys. Um, and I, I totally to feel them. like that. They, they also have done very oh, yeah. inspiring work in the Super uh, they, Mario Brothers genre. Yeah, a few weeks ago, I, I totally, totally geeked out uh, when I got on a Skype call on a stream with Eric, the guy who made Disco Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball, which yeah. is my absolutely fantastically favorite, um, really my favorite indie game right now. Uh, I haven't played in a few weeks, but yeah. I need to start playing it again. Disco I need Dodgeball, to get, you know, that's an okay game. Oh, come on, it's fantastic. It's all right. Don't undersell that. You know it. You've streamed it like crazy. I haven't, um, I haven't won tournaments and. I don't, yeah, it's no big deal. Oh, you're just you're just sour then. You're just sour about that. <laughs> I don't have a crown on my avatar or nothing. Yeah. Um. Yes, but no, uh, I, that's I, I a that fantastic too. one. Um. Yeah. Uh. I feel like I just went on a million tangents, which is normal for people who know me. Uh. I do that a lot. Any um, other 
Every I will actually I want to make this. I'm going to take a little second to help chat. We're going to outsource some ideas. Um, can we get more suggestions for video game literature? Um, mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. it's game mm -hmm. studies, whether it's just stories, um, anything that's literature on games. Because uh, we've got uh, most of the people that we'll be having on panels and stuff are also like published in some way, whether it's uh, online game journalism or if it's actual books or other things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but uh, that's something that's really, really important to me. I can make a couple of suggestions too. Um, oh, there's Game Design Vocabulary Foundation Principles, um, which I think, is that, that's not Bogos. Um, just, <laughs> I cannot recommend any reading on games, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was uh, well. Don't don't just go to. I I would say this. Don't just go to. Uh, for those who haven't, I mean, for those who have finished a project, you know that you don't need to just gather inspiration from like a textbook. No, you can gather it from anywhere. So it's important. And and I mean, and anybody knows this. I'm not saying that only that many people, but um, I don't want to be exclusive in any way. Um, but know that you can gather inspiration from everywhere. Like uh, so. That those that movie and that book were very inspiring for Super Pixalo. My next project is very inspired um, uh, a lot by uh, the music by Ryan Sheehan and uh, the book Catcher in the Rye, um, oh, nice. which is totally different. Uh, I came up with the game idea while mowing my parents' lawn in the rain, <laughs> um, yeah. and uh, I've been fleshing it out for about a year now on paper, and uh, I think it will be really interesting. He says everything maybe. and anything could be a muse. Yeah, uh, exactly. but there's also uh, theory of fun came up in there. Um, I, I honestly yeah, don't remember the. Fun. These are all books that I know and have perused, uh, but I don't remember the author's name, which is always the most important part of citing literature. Uh, but you know what the best thing about indie games is? Yeah, is that Everyone's most of the, the literature. time. No, Everyone's most of the, the time, people make the games for them, for their, for them, for their kind of niches, right? So you know that they, hopefully, loved the game that they made, and they like playing it. So you get even more excited about playing those games. Like they're they're ex individual expressions of people. They're very individual expressions of people's play styles, their interests. So cool. Mm -hmm. That's why I love this community. This I just want to community. point out in your game um, that you keep doing. Unlike uh, something like Super Meat Boy, which the camera angle absolutely represents Super Meat Boy, um, all the <laughs> jumping and stuff where you're mm -hmm. landing on flat platforms is like so Mega Man. It is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot slippier too. Yeah, um, slippery Mega Man. Yeah, because you know pixels don't have arms or legs, so you had to. I had to put. I had to do some studying up on what pixels pixels could do if they were like able to walk around. You know. Come, uh, come for the platforming. Stay for the anthropomorphic pixel people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a uh, super beefy meat boy. Oh, another another fall. All right, exotic. Oh, there's gonna... lots of falls. That's 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 you're gonna do a lot of. Um, I'm just keep. But uh, yeah, and then once I add the timers, that's gonna add a whole another level of frustration. I've got a couple other game modes that oh I'm I'm gosh. thinking of adding. These levels are um, getting meaner. They're great. Well, I've also made the they're game great. much more yeah, sizable. Sure like you have to realize that, um, like Super Meat Boy, I never beat because I couldn't get there. Like I spent hours and hours, and I just couldn't finish. And so, uh, one of the things I want to do with my levels is have a slower, more gradual uh, increase in difficulty. So you can rush through those first se the seventies pretty quickly if you if you you know know how to platform. Mm -hmm. um, you feel less like you're being slammed in the face with a sledgehammer from day one. Um, you feel more interest. You know you're you're able to kind of just sort of ease in, and that's yeah. important. Um, so I what I wanted to do with that is um, in in later levels it gets harder but it never gets as hard that it's unbeatable um and so you can beat the game like uh most games these days at least in my impression it's very hard to beat them and so or a lot of games uh, especially in the platformer world they make it intentionally very very hard to beat uh, and i wanted to make it a little bit more manageable i realize it's still hard but you know so what? That's... when you're designing levels how do you go about that are you just like, this looks hard? Or is there a certain kind of flow or feel that you want the player to kinetically perform? Or what's up, especially like in in terms of this level? 
Yeah, I can't looks... see it because my my hitbox isn't loading um, for some reason. Well, it's a, a straight up pillar of blocks that you just have to fall down. Uh, but it's alternating laser beams on each side, so you have to weave oh yes in and out the slalom. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so when I the way I do level design um, is very much not out of anything I read or any, I did a lot of reading, um, and I use you know I kind of use that to kind of form my own kind of opinion because I realized that I could design levels like everyone else, or I could kind of go on my own thing and it might be unique um it's going to be inspired by how the does everyone played, else design but... levels though i mean that I well mean, i, don't I know mean you've got your question. typical level design where it's like you know all horizontal all or i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> um, uh, yeah no continue on yeah it oh, how did i i have loads and loads of papers and folders and notebooks that are just basically all scribble out shapes yeah, um, your game design document must be amazing. It's huge. It's actually just uh, a cabinet. It it's it's a big. I have the levels literally rolled up with a a, a rubber band. I have three of these like spools of levels. Um, because I the way I design levels is I'll sketch something on like a little Office Depot pad, <laughs> and I'll sketch like an idea. I'll be like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if he has to get from this corner to this corner in the way there's moving blocks. Uh, maybe some blocks disappear. Um, but he has to double back on himself. But I, I like to design levels in such a way that there isn't just one way, which is hard to do with a platformer. There isn't just one way to complete the level. It's not like a linear approach. And uh, so I explored that a lot in the 70s where you don't have anything that's necessarily keeping you from uh, finishing the level, uh, you know, beating the level. Um, but there is really the only thing keeping you from beating a level quickly is your own clumsiness. But you can... <laughs> you know, get up there as fast as possible, as fast as you can. And that enables you to kind of learn the mechanics, which are a little bit funky. Um, let's see, what else? So I'd sketch something else on a piece of paper. I'd take that, take that to graph paper, then take that and map that to a PNG. Um, everything in the game uh, I designed at a 272 pixel by 150, 153 pixel high um, uh ratio so everything is extremely tiny it scales all the way down to 272 pixels and it's actually playable at that level and then it scales up so that way it's very uh very easy to you know it's it's not memory intensive um it's oh. easy to manage so you actually um, build your grid off of pixels themselves as a as a unit of measurement yes everything is super tiny uh and you that's why why here you know when you see it played everything looks a little bit more bulky and toy-like because there's, it's scaled up from such a tiny level. There's actually something like, I don't think you're alone in kind of that approach. And if you want to talk about one reason why there might be a, uh, why there might be such a prevalence of any kind of pixel based art uh, is just because of how useful that is as a unit of measurement in play mm. in mm. computer games. Yeah. Like there's, it's, it's not even necessarily <laughs> like, wow, I, I really like, that, I mean, that's a big part is that you people really like the uh, pixel aesthetic because um, that's what they know. It's what everyone's grown up as. But usually there's kind of like cycles to uh, artistic movements. And so you'd get like 20 year, every 20 years, a revival of a 20 year past thing with a little extra on it. Uh, and that's kind of what you see here. But there's a little more to it in that just because this, uh, because pixels are so useful as measurement, as structure, mm -hmm. as uh, mm -hmm. this kind of architecture, it's like, it keeps coming up and is constantly there. That's yeah. a weird approach, and I, I wouldn't have thought about that unless you you talked about that. Yeah, I wouldn't have really either. Uh, like jump height actually... is important. That's what Bloody Honey says in chat. Uh, jump height. Oh yeah, it's usually important. Uh, but that's all just based on scaling and what you, the way I yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't want to get too technical because I've done that before and bored people. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's really important. Um. Pixel art is great because it, well, yeah, um, DW has a point. It's nostalgic. And so as as much as there are so many haters out there. No, I, and as I get the nostalgic part, and, but I was also kind of looking for. it's hard to do good pixel art, and I am not in any way claiming to be a good pixel art. I learned pixel art over Christmas, uh, <laughs> at least my interpretation of pixel art. And there are That was while you were getting away from family. That's exactly, exactly. Actually, I spent a lot of time with family, so I wasn't so depressed. But, uh, nice. Um, yeah, that was during one of my depression things, and I was like, I need... That was when I Start decided pixeling. to... 
Yeah, basically. I needed to just work on a granular level. Uh, I spent most of the time with Photoshop zoomed in at 3,200%, and I'm not even kidding. That's that's the uh, the zoom in that my corner always says over in, in Photoshop. Um, but, um, yeah, I love, I love the fact that, well, one, it's easier for, like, someone who's not a designer. So I'm not a designer in any way. I sketch horribly. I draw horribly. I paint horribly. Uh, I'm pretty good at Legos, but that's technically not design. <laughs> um, that's like pixel art, isn't it? It, it kind of is. So I took that and was like, okay, so I know how to make shapes. I know how to make stuff kind of roundish. And, and I, I know more about, though, uh, is symmetry. And so a lot of the design elements you'll see that blocks the different things within the game, it really based on symmetry and asymmetry uh, at a minute level. So you have the blocks themselves, like the levels themselves are made of blocks. And then each of the blocks are made of little blocks. And you kind of kind of look in there and... And I have different things kind of almost hidden in there. There's like capacitors, there's ohm symbols, there's different stuff from electronics. Um, I don't have anything like, you know, that's text text or anything like that. It's more of just stuff is hidden in there. Um, that, I'm that scrubbing backwards me. through Exotics' stream and it's going backwards through the day, the decades. Nice. <laughs> Just yeah, um, but uh, yeah, so you can kind of see the style. I am right. Okay, now we're in the 90s. Oh, this level. Well, that one's hard. Um, most, I find the levels hard. So if you play the game, uh, if you have an Ouya, you can play it now. If you have it on a desktop, let's get it greenlit, and then you can play it on there. Uh, and it's only five bucks, uh, although when it comes out, launches, it will be like three bucks. That's what I did for um, Ouya, and that was really, really well received. Yeah, how it was it? Um, Go ahead. I was going to ask a question and I forgot. Just I duplicated on myself. <laughs> Never mind. Carry on. Cool. Um, so it did pretty good on Ouya uh, for an Ouya game. I don't. No one ever shares their stats, so I'm just going to share my stats. I I think there were in the first week there were a thousand downloads. There were a hundred and wow. five purchases. Wow. And then there were, and then it had an average rating of four stars out of five. Wow. Um, and it was in the top 10 trending games on the Ouya, which is pretty good because there's 800 of them. Um, so that was great. That was super encouraging. I was able to partner up with Ouya um, so that had some promotional stuff. They are fantastic to work with. Tim Grotman, uh, Alex bob um working on developing uh and working on integrating their um their sdk is a breeze because of those guys uh i cannot speak more highly of the quality of support you get over there you just you know realize that there's only like 20 of them running this company and doing everything and uh and then the, it, your mind is blown at the the level of quality of stuff they're able to to help you with, and the the way they're able to put out stuff, uh, which is absolutely incredible. They're just a fantastic company. And I, you know, I know a lot of people have been writing those posts about oh, um, uh, the Ouya is dead and stuff like that. And well, that's what I no, was getting at was how functional the system it is for artists, right? Hey, sorry yeah, to cut it's in. It's perfect. Uh, but we need to take one second and move to the other channel uh because we we're accidentally in the secondary panel channel so and they're getting oh, ready to start just so, some mumble stuff yeah yeah so here we go go ahead whoop, whoop. and there we are we're back um so we only do have a couple of minutes left um okay. so i wanted to get any any final thoughts that you have where are you going now with pixelo um so super pixelo uh so now's a good time to make the little announcement <gasps> for the people who like the game um the there will be a uh, extended all those there's like the songs are kind of short within the in within the actual um within the game they're only like on a 30 second loop you can't tell because sod did such a good job um they're incredibly well done um mm -hmm. but there'll be a uh, uh an extended original soundtrack that will be coming out um uh, most likely at the end of this week on uh on what is it bandcamp on bandcamp that's what yeah bandcamp um for sale and you'll be able to check out those awesome tunes. That's um, awesome. Uh, and then also, yeah, uh, get it greenlit. Uh, it's where's 18 the link for the greenlit right now. Where's the link for the green light? I will post it. We should have probably been posting it this whole time. But, I know. Um, yeah, if everybody, everybody here watching, all 712 people here watching, Twitter too, clicked yes 
and voted for it, that would be amazing. If you guys um, can help at all, please, please click yes uh, on the green light and help help everyone's friend Phil. Uh, yeah. A big part of why I wanted you here is that the things that you talk about and the things that you've developed for, how really how complex and layered that the development and the design that goes into this game is and how personal it is to you uh, really represents all of us here. Plus he needs to feed his baby. Yeah, I do need to feed my baby. I have a day job, but you know what? <laughs> no, that, we need to. That pays we're the bills. So help, let's pay for diapers. And help food. feed baby. Help feed Phil's son, please. Yes, and also you're finding other games. I'm working on my next project, uh, which I'll probably announce later this week. You're not um, going to announce it at ND three. Well, I well I was gonna do it. Uh, okay, I can do it now. Yes. Uh, my next project. Yes. Is uh, awesome. is a completely, completely, completely flip side of of Super Pixalo. Um, Pixalo Super. Is completely. Yes, it's that. No. Uh, no, it's actually an interactive novella uh, called Dissonance, and oh. what it does is it explores. It explores basically the the progression of uh, one man's. Um, basically the progression of his of his thought patterns through three distinct stages in his life um and that's about as much as i'll say because i wow. don't i'm still shaping it i'm still working on it um Jeez, that hype yeah i it's gonna be sweet it's gonna be it's gonna be a shorter game it's only but it's gonna be it's gonna be cool exploring um something that's heavily story based and where the gameplay is actually uh, completely enforcing what you're reading. Um, so that's, I really wanted to work on something that really made the, the correlation between gameplay and reading and, and, and a story. Oh, well, because oftentimes they're is... like two separate things at the same time. Well, what if one, like to understand how to beat the, you know, level, you have to understand his thought process of what yeah. you're doing. No visual you know, novels, so... interactive fiction, hypertext. Yeah. That is, I, that, I, that's where my heart is at. I love, yeah, so, love, love that kind of stuff. So we're we're doing uh we're doing and that next. From what I've seen, Super Pixalo doesn't look like it has a lot of words to it, but I was reading the stories while they were going by, and there's some you've got you're really good at writing this stuff. Uh for all of the things that you were trying to do with just the small amount of text that you had for each collectible. It was like this is actually yeah. this is fun to read. It was insightful. Those uh, actually weren't it, for the collectibles. Those were uh, that was just the story. The uh, collectibles have just titles. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sure. Yeah, but no, that that story was uh, just really fun to read. It was like, yeah, this is I see. This is a nice homage. I'm noticing the little references here and there, but it's also <laughs> telling this like really just fun, cheeky little story. Uh, so I can't wait thank to you. see more. Awesome. Um, everyone, everyone, just thank you for being here. Thank you for helping support Indie Three. Help. Thank you, Phil. Um, all the love going on there. We've got. Oh, awesome! Uh, Squeaky Bee and By Winningism, our dear friend, y'all, y'all know them. Um, are putting on a panel called "The Impact of Video Games and Streaming: Making a Difference, Saving Lives," uh, and that's on Channel Indie Four. Um, we're gonna go down for a bit, and uh, what probably half hour? Or do we want to go down for the panel itself? Or um, well, what we got? Uh, what we, we want to run some trailers at seven o'clock. We have our panel that was scheduled for talking about audio over the course of this last panel. Yes. Yes. Um, you know what? That's a great idea. Uh, so in about 15, 20 minutes, we'll do a little bit, a couple more trailers to lead us into a talk on audio. Okay. So let's call that 630 with some trailers. And then... And then late tonight, of course, we've got the performance by uh, JM. Ambo Jangles is going to be rocking it out. And that's at 8 p.m., so do not miss that. Um, this is the last time that you're going to see me tonight because I've got to go. My little sister is graduating high school today. And so, hypes for that. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she's free now. She's free now from the tyranny of high school. Um, thank you guys all for being here. Keep on making games. Keep on doing stuff. You can also be a published console game designer, game artist, um, and just keep making cool stuff, everyone. Thank you.